every time I come into one of these big box stores, there's something that just bugs me to the core. And it's this, six and a half horsepower, really? Five horsepower? I know that number is not right, but what's the actual number? So today I've decided, you know what? I'm taking one home. I'm gonna figure out what the real horsepower is. It looks like our range is two and a half to six and a half. So let's go at four, four and a half, and we'll see how it performs. Welcome to my lab. Today, we test this guy. Here we have our shop vac assembled as it would normally be used, except I didn't put the wheels on it because I'm gonna destroy this thing in just a few minutes. On the back, melted into the plastic permanently for you is again that 4.5 peak horsepower, which bugs me so much. Okay, let's take this guy apart. And here we have our tiny, tiny four horsepower motor. Oh, oh, this just hurts my soul. It really does. Nice. Well, I must say I've taken quite a few of these apart and that's been the easiest one so far. Why engineers did you change the screws here? I don't understand. And here we have the final product. So this is a mount that I designed in order to hold on to this guy after a whole lot of trial and error. Since the shaft doesn't have a key or anything, I decided to weld these nuts onto the end. And then I 3D printed this coupler and based on the recommendation of one of my neighbors, I reinforced the legs with these steel pins. I actually have two of these motors. And this one's after a lot of destructive testing, which you'll see here in just a minute. Before we go any further though, it will be helpful if you understood what horsepower is. And I've actually explained this really well in a previous video. And so there's a link in the description. Uh, in fact, you know what? I will put a clip right here for you so you can just watch it in this video. It's now horsepower and watts are exactly the same thing. Sometimes people are a little bit confused about that, but they're both measures of power. And a horsepower rating or our power ratings are composed of two things in terms of electric motors. And that is the speed or RPM and the torque. Torque is a measure of how much force is being applied to twist the shaft and how far away that force is being applied. And this is why our wrenches come in different sizes. So if you pushing a little six millimeter bolt, you get this little tiny baby wrench. But if you wanna push a 25 millimeter bolt, you're gonna get a much bigger wrench. This allows the same person to apply the same amount of force, but get more torque because their lever arm is longer. Same thing on a seesaw. You put a fat kid on a seesaw and a little kid, the little kid can sit further away and balance out the heavier kid because the little kid has a greater distance. He's applying less force, but they both have the same torque. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you take the twisting force applied to the shaft, and multiply that by the speed at which you move the shaft, then now you have your power rating, and that's what it is. So why is it that this motor, being so much larger than this one, can actually have a lower horsepower rating? Well, that's because this guy is rated for 2700 RPM, and this one's rated at 3600 RPM. This one can spin considerably faster, but with much less torque. And this one applies way more torque but not nearly the same amount of speed. And this is why we have, this is part of the reason why there's such a difference. And then also efficiencies and some other things. If you wanna see more details about how I built this rig or even how to make one yourself, there's a whole video dedicated to this project and I'll put a link in the description for you so you can check that out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are finally ready to test this motor for horsepower. There's a couple of variables we need to know in order to test this motor correctly. On the back of every electrical appliance, there's a uh, voltage and current rating. 
So we're gonna use that because we know that that should be the optimal performance range for this motor. Also, because this is a universal motor, I'm gonna to need to slowly dial up the voltage instead of just hitting it with 120 volts. Otherwise, it'll spin out of control and give us a big spark show. Let's fire it up. Man, that's loud. Okay, so I was so excited when I saw the number, I already forgot. Seriously, 0.86? That's like 600, hold on, 640 watts. <laughs> it's not even half. Oh my gosh. So it was like 1250 watts from the wall, 640. Like we're talking 50% efficiency approximately. I'm rounding some here. All right, let's take a quick side note here. Efficiency is a number you're interested in. You just haven't thought about it in terms of your motor. What this number tells us is that barely half of the power we're drawing from the wall is actually being converted into useful work at the motor. You do the same thing with your car. You put gasoline in and you track the miles per gallon because you wanna know how efficiently your car uses the gasoline. Some of it's being converted into useful work and some of it's being exhausted out of the tailpipe, some of it's being converted into heat, and you're wasting even more energy trying to manage the heat in your motor. When you put a log on a fire, it's the same thing. You get some heat and light, which you want, and you get some ashes and smoke, which you don't want. When you eat food, same thing. Some of it's being converted into energy, which you may or may not want, and some of it's passing through your body as waste, which you don't want. This motor is actually wasting half of the electricity that it's drawing from the wall. I would not have expected the number to be quite that low. All right, let's jump back on track here for a second. They're calling this peak horsepower instead of horsepower. And I know from looking into this that there's no official definition of peak horsepower. Interestingly though, they've been down this road before because they have defined peak horsepower for us right on the box and at the bottom of their website. Let me show you. All right, we're on ShopVac's website. So I'm gonna put the text on the screen for you so that you can see what I see. But basically it says that it does not denote operational horsepower, which is the number I just measured, but rather the horsepower output of a motor, including its inertia contribution achieved in laboratory testing. In actual use, shop vac motors do not operate at peak horsepower. I've been reading and studying up on electric motors for several years now, and I have no idea what they just said. I'm not gonna give up that easy. We're gonna figure this out. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Is this customer service with, for ShopVac? Nope. Personal cell phone. Oh, sorry. I must have dialed the wrong number. Yes. Sorry about that. Good afternoon, ShopVac customer service. How can I help you? Hey, my name is Jeremy, and I am trying to figure out how to measure the horsepower on one of your ShopVac motors. Uh, at the bottom of the website, it says that this was achieved in laboratory testing, but I can't find anything that describes how the testing was done. Is there a way, is there someone I can talk to to help me figure out like how to duplicate their results? Um, I don't think we're allowed to. That would be against the company, I believe. Let me check. Uh, is there a particular unit you're looking at? Uh, yes, let's see here. I can give you a model number. Yeah, on the back of the shop vac, it says MOD dot, I'm assuming that's model, mm -hmm. SL14-450. All right, let me, um, let's see, email our tech. Um, and what's your phone number? I'll see if I can call you back. You're trying to duplicate the testing result? Yes. So I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing differently, why I'm not getting the same results. And uh, as soon as I get any word on it, I will let you know. Hey, great, thank you. 
You're welcome, sir. Bye. Okay, maybe she'll call me back. Ladies and gentlemen, she called me back. Sarah, if you ever watched this video, by the way, fantastic conversation and thank you so much for your help. You were super kind. The conclusion we came to is that we're not gonna get any more information beyond the actual text that's on the website. However, there are some clues that we can draw from the text that they've given us. The most important one is, it clearly describes the output of the motor. That means that it can't be any reference to the electrical power being drawn from the wall. So we're gonna exclude all those variables as test parameters and focus exclusively on the power we can get at the shaft. That excludes another variable as well because if we try to measure locked rotor torque, that's the maximum torque the motor can put out when the shaft can no longer rotate and the motor is basically pushing as hard as it can. The RPM is zero. So if you put all that in the formula, you get zero horsepower. Again, it's another variable that doesn't make sense in terms of measuring peak horsepower. Here's what I've decided to do. I'm basically gonna load this motor as much as possible and keep cranking up the load until both the RPM and the torque start to come down. And then I'll know that I have passed its maximum output or the motor will flame up and like vibrate and explode or something. That's entirely possible with this kind of motor. Let's find out. This time I'm gonna hit it with 120 volts right from the start. So I better go ahead and put a little load on there just so it doesn't go crazy. Three amps. That sounds good. Okay. Woo. <laughs> I actually blew the fuse in my variable transformer earlier, so I'm gonna to have to hit it with 120 volts direct since I don't have any more fuses on hand. And hopefully uh, the load will be low enough that we can actually make it through this final destructive test. All right, here we go. Last chance, cause the motor's probably not gonna survive another test like this. Okay, I think she's done. I can definitely smell the smoke. I'll put the peak number that I found after scrubbing through the footage on the screen for you. So let's just draw some conclusions here. We're measuring somewhere around 1.75 peak horsepower and let's just give them two and a half just for the sake of maybe I didn't do it right. So up to two and a half horsepower, it doesn't seem to be anywhere near the number that they're reporting on the box. And remember, this is prominently stamped on the box it's in the manual, it's melted into the plastic on the front of your shop vac, and it's the most meaningless number on the product. Why not brag on suction power or some of the other things that are actually meaningful in terms of a shop vac? I also wanna point out that shop vac in particular is a brand name and that this is universal across these wet dry vacs. I saw Craftsman and I saw DeWalt shop vacs or wet dry vacuums with these same kind of numbers on the box. So we're not just picking on this one company. The test that I did today has no direct bearing on the actual performance of this shop vac. It may do a great job of sucking up water and sucking up dirt. And I also think that a universal motor in this application is a smart choice. I mean, it's not very efficient, but hey, it packs a lot of power in a very tiny package and they're dirt cheap. I don't wanna pay $500 for my shop vac. I think it's a good choice. So what do we do with our newfound knowledge then? First, you need to share this with everybody you know who either has a shop vac or is thinking about buying a shop vac. We've all been duped into thinking that we were getting a better shop vac because it had a higher horsepower number on it. When in reality, the performance may be exactly the same as a much smaller shop vac with better efficiency, as we saw earlier. The next thing we need to do is actually look at some good reviews and articles on shop vac performance, because that's what we care about the functional performance. I've stumbled across a lot of good articles along the way researching on this, so I'm gonna put several in the description. Feel free to pass those along as well. And finally, this doesn't mean that you should throw out your shop vac because you thought it had more horsepower than it actually has. If it's doing the job fine, then it's doing the job. That's all we really care about. But four and a half horsepower, I don't know where they got that number from. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. After reviewing the footage, I decided to go back and double check a couple things, anticipating a few questions. One of the things I wanted to check was whether I was measuring the horsepower at its actual operating speed with the impeller installed. So before taking apart the second shot vac, I actually measured the RPM of the impeller itself and it ended up being about 20,000 RPM. And that perfectly coincided with the test that I ran earlier.